Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Fat Liberation Manifesto. That's right, much like a terrorist splinter cell, the fat activists have a manifesto. I'm guessing it's a document detailing their lists of various demands, so it should be hilarious. We're also going to be taking a look at a few bonus clips from Jordan Underwood. I recently started up channel memberships, so if you're interested in such a thing, for $5 a month you'll get a badge next to your name, access to custom emojis, as well as top priority in my comment replies. A join button is below. By the way, my comment filter has been messed up, so I have to go through manually and find all the member comments, so I apologize if I've missed any. Before we proceed, please Please click the like button so that I may apply comb to mustache. Have you heard of the Fat Liberation Manifesto? I posted it to my other account today and I thought I'd share it here too. It was written by two of the founders of the Fat Underground Movement in 1973. The Fat Underground Movement. Fum. Okay. Kind of ironic to have the word movement in there, huh? Judy Free Spirit and Sarah Fishman, who was then writing under a pen name. Here's what they wrote. We believe that fat people are fully entitled to human respect and recognition. We are angry at mistreatment by commercial and sexist interests. These have exploited our bodies as objects of ridicule. I don't think ridiculing somebody is the same as exploiting their body. Exploited our bodies as objects of ridicule. Yeah, see, that sentence doesn't work. I don't exploit the thing that I'm ridiculing simultaneously. Thereby creating an immensely profitable market, selling the false promise of avoidance or relief from that ridicule. Selling products to help you cure the problems that you have created for yourself is exploitative. I don't know, you're the one who made yourself that size. They didn't make you that size and then try to sell you the cure. We see our struggle as allied with the struggles of other oppressed groups against classism, racism, sexism, ageism, financial exploitation, imperialism, and the like. Imperialism? Oh my goodness, we're just grasping for straws now. You can see yourself as allied with whatever group that you want. That doesn't mean that that group agrees that you're an ally. When you said that you want to be allied with mustachioed gentlemen, I was not consulted. I don't think anybody consulted those other groups either. They may take issue with this. Imperialism. Oh my goodness gracious. We demand equal rights for fat people in all aspects of life as promised in the Constitution of the United States. It does not specifically reference fat people in that document, okay? We demand equal access to goods and services in the public domain. No, we will continue to have segregated parking for fat people. Oh wait, that doesn't exist. That never did exist. So this whole entire diatribe doesn't make any sense. Diatribe is a good word, right? You're impressed. I'm sorry, this is stupid. <laughs> Just a little random timeout from the video. Um, diatribe was a nice word, right? You liked it. I liked it. I'm sorry, this is stupid. To me, this is funny. I'm sorry, I'm old. And an end to the discrimination against us in the areas of employment, education, public facilities, and health services. Right, we demand an end to all the non-existent discrimination that's taking place against us. Okay. We single out as our special enemies the so-called reducing industries. Special enemies? The reducing industries. Dude, this manifesto is reading like other types of manifestos. We single out as our special enemies? <laughs> Who do you think you are, man? You guys are trying to act like you're revolutionaries fighting in a battle against some sort of oppressive system or something, when in reality, you just ate too much and the wrong type of food several times. I think that it is completely insane to go from, man, I really ate too much, I should get it together, to, I am a warrior fighting a struggle against oppression. It requires a significant amount of mental gymnastics to make that happen. I have never tried to take my shortcomings and turn them around and act like I'm fighting some sort of oppressive system and I'm Neo all of a sudden. I don't eat too much. I'm Neo and the Matrix is trying to keep me down, bro. I don't know, man. I don't know. These include diet clubs, reducing salons, fat farms. Reducing salons. The level of brain damage that I'm getting from the type of language that these people use to try to distance themselves from their own actions is substantial. Here's another Matrix reference. They're trying to dodge their responsibilities like Neo dodging bullets. So you're telling me that I can dodge oppressive dieting systems? No, Neo. I'm telling you that when the time comes, you won't have to. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> I'm sorry. 
<laughs> and you're like, dude, just get back to the stupid video, you idiot. <laughs> Arms diet doctors, diet books, diet foods, and food supplements, surgical procedures, appetite suppressants, drugs, and gadgetry such as wraps and reducing machines. Reducing machines? What, is, what the hell is that? <laughs> what is that? Is that like that machine my grandma used to have? They had a belt that goes around your butt like this and it shakes it like that? I swear she used to have that. She used to have a few of those stupid old-timey weight loss machines. We demand that they take responsibility for their false claims, acknowledge that their products are harmful to the public health, and publish long-term studies proving- And what happens if they meet all your demands, huh? Are you still gonna pass away early due to your obesity? I'm not trying to be mean here, but literally, what are we doing? Any statistical efficacy of their products. We make this demand known- I don't know who you're demanding all this stuff from that over 99% of all weight loss programs when evaluated over a five-year period fail utterly and okay so you're putting your lies and nonsense statistics into your list of demands your first demand on this list of demands should have been that everybody gets an ice pick lobotomy so that the rest of these demands will just kind of wash their way right into your brain and you'll accept it right also knowing the extreme proven harmfulness of frequent large changes in weight Okay, what, you couldn't finish the sentence there? Hold on. Fail utterly, and also knowing the extreme proven harm- The extreme- Oh, you had to reshoot that last part because the word proven was really throwing you off there. Unless a frequent large changes in weight. We repudiate the mystified science which falsely claims that we are unfit. It is both cause of- We repudiate the mystified science which falsely claims that we are unfit. The amount of pseudo-intellectualism in this document is astounding. It's so bizarre to me how every morbidly obese person is a total intellectual. The most highly esteemed and highly educated of our colleagues are morbidly obese. Upheld discrimination against us in collusion with the financial interests of insurance companies, the fashion and garment industries, reducing industries, the food and drug industries, reducing industries, and the medical and psychiatric establishment. Oh, we got a problem with the psychiatric establishment as well, huh? You guys told me that being fat was my own fault. How dare you? We refuse to be subjugated to the interests of our enemies. We fully- Our enemies? Oh my goodness. Um, what are you gonna do? We fully intend to reclaim power over our bodies and- We fully intend to reclaim power over our bodies. What? You mean by losing weight or taking care of your physique or you mean indiscriminately eating to harm ourselves until we pass away early? That will stick it to our enemies, won't it? In our lives, we commit ourselves to pursue these goals together. Fat people of the world unite. You have nothing to lose. Isn't it? Okay, so the point of this manifesto is that a bunch of fat people should get together and bitterly demand a bunch of crap from random people. We demand to be treated better in all these different places, yada yada yada. But all the things that they're demanding aren't even true. They're demanding better treatment here, there, and everywhere, but they're not getting worse treatment here, there, and everywhere. If you go to the doctor and he tells you to lose weight, that's because being obese is unhealthy. You're not being mistreated. If you never ask for a promotion at work or work hard, you'll never get promoted. How about that? It has nothing to do with your weight. It just so happens that people that are morbidly obese aren't the biggest go-getters. Pun intended. While that with as much that has changed since 1973, so much is still the same. All right, so that was bizarre. Uh, it's basically a list of demands from fat activists. I don't know why or who they're demanding all this stuff from. We single out as our enemies, the reducing industries. Oh, I'm sure the reducing industries are terrified of you. I think that marching against any of these companies might be fat phobic, so I don't think we're in trouble. Now we're gonna take a look at some bonus clips from Jordan Underwood. Jordan's gonna be responding to this comment that says, block him and STFU. You have no idea how much I would love to be able to do that. But unfortunately, I reached the block limit. <laughs> There's a block limit? Oh my goodness. How many people have you blocked? So you've blocked so many people that you've reached the block limit. Stop blocking my new accounts, Jordan. Dang it. You're so hard to talk to sometimes. All you do is block me and shut me out. I'm sorry. I'm being weird. Because... I don't know. I don't because you've blocked however many thousands of people, and now you have no more room to block people. So that's alarming. I don't know why TikTok has a block limit. It doesn't really make sense to me. That is weird, but what is the block limit? Have you blocked like 5,000 people? I wouldn't be surprised. But it's true. So 
I will continue to respond to these videos and... Okay, so you reached the block limit and now you've decided to just start responding to every single negative comment. I love that. This is going to make for good videos in the future. If that bothers you, if my content bothers you in general, like I really, really recommend blocking me because... Who the hell would block Jordan Underwood? This is TikTok. It's my TikTok, actually. My account, Jordan Underwood. I made it. And so I'm going to keep posting what I want to post because, again, it's my TikTok. And as a person on this planet, you are a person on this planet. I'm allowed to be on social media. Doesn't matter if you don't like me. Why are you explaining yourself to every single person like this, dude? Oh my goodness, Jordan. Me, that's normal, right? Um, as people, sometimes we don't vibe with other people. And for me, I just don't interact with the people that- All right, I don't understand what this whole spiel's about because they just said block him and STF you. I don't vibe with. Um, I'm not really sure why you all are so dead set on being miserable, but... No, I think they were trying to help you. They're like, just block them and STF you, dude. Let it go. But apparently you can't because you've reached your block limit. That's also not my business. That's, uh, that's between you and your therapist, so... Okay, so we've learned a couple of things. TikTok does have a block limit, and Jordan has reached it. So if you want to say anything crazy to Jordan Underwood, they cannot block you. I'm not encouraging anybody to do it. <laughs> I don't know how wise it is, Jordan, to go around telling the internet that you've reached your block limit. Aren't you just encouraging people to go start leaving you negative comments now? They're like, oh, Jordan can't block us anymore, huh? Let's go. This is the face I make when I'm going to go critique people. Next. Now they're going to be responding to this comment that says, Also, I hate fat models because real models actually do something like loose weight to look good and you don't do anything. Real models do loose weight. I'm so sick of seeing people misspell that. So nobody cares that you hate fat models, right? Oh, ho, 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 get dunked on, commenter. Right? As people, we all hate different things. That's not me. I love everybody. A normal part of human life. What I don't understand. It's not normal. Stan, is that the rest of us are having a great time 100% of the time, dude. If you ever feel any sort of negative emotion at all, that's not normal, dude. Something's wrong with you. What the hell? That's weird. I, so when you comment this, you're telling TikTok that you want to see more content like this. Is that how that works? When I tell TikTok, hey, I hate fat models, TikTok's like, oh, you want to see some fat models, huh? Okay. Wow. TikTok is a jerk. You want to see more of my videos and you want to see more videos of fat bitches thriving. <laughs> I do. That's what I want to see. That's what I want my feed filled with. But I guess the point that Jordan is making is that if you leave a comment on somebody's video, the algorithm is going to be like, hey, you interacted with that. You must like that content. Here's a lot more. I think Jordan might be correct on that. The algorithm doesn't know if it's a hate comment that you're leaving. It's just like, oh, you're interacting with this. Exactly what you don't like. So... Why not just block me and move along? Now we've gone to the point of telling other people to block us because we can't block them. <laughs> That's what this is. Okay. Just curious. All right, that was just a couple clips from Jordan. Psych, we got more. Let's go. Now Jordan's going to be responding to this comment that reads, I'm not super skinny or nothing, but I am definitely a healthy size for my height. I'm five foot one. I'm happy that I'm not grossly fat. I'm lucky for that. A very helpful comment indeed. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing, Jessica. <laughs> is that what this is? We're making fun of somebody's name being Jessica because that's like the stereotypical girly girl, yada, 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 that all the fat liberationists are angry at. Fat liberationists. Oh my God, they got me saying it. With each passing day, I become more liberated. I really want to hold space for the vulnerability that you brought to this. I really want to hold space for the vulnerability that you brought. I know that you're just messing about, but that terminology is mind rot. Table today. An intelligent person can take a very complex subject and put it in language that is simple enough for anyone to understand. It's very, very impressive. 
<laughs> this person is telling you that they're five foot one and they're not overweight. You're welcome. Um, I don't understand the point of this comment either. I'm not sure what that person meant by that comment or even if it was intended for Jordan. It might have been intended for other commenters below the video. I'm not like super in shape or nothing, but I'm not fat. Okay, cool, dude. Even though I'm 5'1", and maybe I'm a little chubby or whatever, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not fat. I've never been like full on fat before. Okay, I, what is the point of this comment? I'm gonna have to agree with Jordan here. What are we doing? <laughs> what is the point of this? Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. All right, Jordan, your eyes got a little big there. You're making me a little nervous. Calm down. Next. Jordan's gonna be responding to this comment that reads, stop making the fact that you're fat your entire personality. Just because you're fat doesn't mean you can model. No, see, you're totally right. Me being fat doesn't mean I can model, doesn't make me a model. What makes me a model is the fact that I make the majority of my income modeling. Really? What an interesting time to be alive. If you wanna be a model that is not obese, you have to meet some pretty stringent guidelines. You have to be a certain height just to start, and if you're not, you're not a model. You also have to keep your physique looking a certain kind of way, otherwise, you're not a model. There are many things that you have to do in regular modeling, otherwise, you're not a model. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll stop making that stupid noise. <laughs> The second time I did it, you clicked right off. I'm sorry. But it's very hilarious that obese people don't have to do anything for their modeling. Well, not hilarious so much as it is enraging to regular models, I'm sure. Just people hire me to model. Yeah, that's very interesting. We've had large people for a very long time in society, and they've sold large clothes to accommodate larger people for a very long time. But we never used to have obese models, did we? Next. Now Jordan's gonna respond to this comment that says, being fat isn't a problem, but when you're that big, it's very dangerous, and saying it's beautiful and healthy isn't helping. So just to start, nobody said I was healthy. I have a chronic illness that went undiagnosed for 26 years. Okay, they're talking about the obesity being unhealthy, not your other stuff. Of my life, that I talk about regularly on this page. So nobody's saying that I, Jordan Underwood, am healthy right now. No, they're saying when you're that big, it's dangerous and not healthy, is what they're saying. They're not talking about your lipedema or whatever other problems. I talk about getting treatment often, almost yeah. daily on this page. Yep, and that has nothing to do with what they said. So, check. And to your second check. point that because I'm unhealthy, saying that I'm beautiful is not helping. Nothing any of you say is helping any- <laughs> I have to agree that nothing that any of these people are saying is helping. But they didn't say that you're unbeautiful because of your conditions. They said that being obese is not beautiful and it's not healthy. They didn't say you specifically. They're speaking specifically about the obesity. When you're that big, it's very dangerous. And saying it's beautiful and healthy isn't helping when you're that big. They didn't say, Jordan, you're unhealthy, therefore you cannot be beautiful. You're twisting their words to suit your own narrative. Anything because you're nobody. Oh, ho, 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 ho. you're nobody, son. The only person who can help my health are my doctors, my lymphatic therapist, people in my community. People in your community can help your health. What about you? Can you help your health? And myself. Ah, there we go. Thank you. Thank you for saying myself. The people that can help me are my doctors, my community, my lymphatic massage therapist, this guy that I met at a Wendy's one time. So you and anyone in the comments, even those people saying that I'm beautiful, they're saying it because they thought I looked good and they wanted to fill my cup. Like. It they want to fill your cup? It has nothing to do with my health and ultimately it has little impact on my health. The obesity? Gee, I don't know, bestie. I think the weight might be having a deleterious effect on our health. Other than that, when you feel good, you are able to take better care of yourself. That is true. But ultimately there's no helping or not helping. It's just commentary. That being said, if you're so concerned with people losing weight, fat shaming statistically leads people to gain weight. Okay, well, I don't think that we should go around fat shaming people and making fun of them for their weight, but if people making fun of you makes you gain weight, that's literally your own problem. You're self-soothing with your substance of choice. Giving alcoholics a hard time for drinking 
statistically leads them to drink more. So what are you doing? So if you were interested in fat people online becoming thin or being less fat, you keep your mouth shut. If you're interested in learning more about fat people online, keep your mouth shut. All right, man, things got a little dark there. And to be very clear, you do have a problem with fat people or else you wouldn't have a problem with people telling a fat person that they're beautiful. That is not what they said, Jordan. Quit twisting their words. They said being fat isn't a problem, but when you're that big, it's very dangerous. And saying it's beautiful and healthy isn't helping. They didn't tell a fat person, hey, you're fat and therefore not beautiful. They said the fat itself is dangerous and not healthy and not beautiful. You shouldn't identify with your fat to such an extent to where you defend it as if it were a person or as if it were you. Or that they find them desirable. You don't like it, not because in your eyes that's going to enable me to become fatter or whatever you think. That's a problem to you because you have a problem with fat people, specifically with fat people feeling good about themselves. Nah, they have a problem with other people emulating this type of behavior because it's unhealthy. They don't have a problem with fat people feeling good about themselves. Healthy or not. And that's the end of that one. So apparently we're gonna see a lot more videos of Jordan responding to people in the comments because they've reached their block limit on TikTok. <laughs> So what did you think of the clips that we just watched of Jordan? And what do you think of the Fat Liberationist Manifesto? I think that manifesto is hilarious because it's written like they're gonna do something, right? Like, we single out as our enemies, these industries, blah, 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 like you're gonna do something. When was that manifesto written? Like back in 73 or something? You guys can launch your attack anytime now, dude. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Please click the like button. One like equals one mustache coming. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.